Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Breaking one NFL team just apologized to the military for kneeling, do you forgive them? It is truly disgusting how many millionaire players on NFL teams protested during the national anthem in a fit of liberal hysteria. One team, at the very least, seems to feel deep remorse about the grave offense they committed in dishonoring members of America's military in this way. Before a game in London against the Baltimore Ravens, the players on the Jacksonville Jaguars went on one knee to show solidarity. Some players stood up as the anthem began to play, but others on the team remained kneeling. After some reflection, the players appeared to have second thoughts about what they did. Said the Jaguars in a statement, We want to make it clear that we never intended in any way to show disrespect towards the U.S. military community, first responders, our flag, or our national anthem. We love and respect everyone who serves and has made sacrifices for the United States in the past, today and the future. That is especially true in our hometown of Jacksonville. Mark Lamping, the president of the Jaguars, later sent a letter to the director of military affairs and veterans in the city of Jacksonville to apologize for having insulted America's military this way. He stated that his team was remiss in not fully comprehending the effect of the national anthem demonstration on foreign soil has had on the men and women who have or continued to serve our country. He added, this was an oversight and certainly not intended to send a message that would disparage you, our flag or our nation. The notion never entered the minds of our players or anyone affiliated with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But today we can understand how the events in London on September 24 could have been viewed or misinterpreted. Lamping concluded, We owe you an apology and hope you will accept it. Can the Jaguars be forgiven for this? MSNBC makes multiple claims that President Trump is a destroyer. MSNBC has compared President Trump to Hitler, ISIS, the KKK, 9-11, Kim Jong-un, Stalin and more. It turns out when you run out of horrible things to compare our president to, all that is left is to call him a destroyer. Multiple MSNBC reporters talked about President Trump this way. It's really pathetic. You know, this is a guy who's supposedly a builder in the private sector. Now all he is is a destroyer. He just wants to take down anything that Barack Obama did. That's no way to govern. We need some continuity in this country, and our allies expect it. Even Vladimir Putin thinks he's wrong on Iran, said MSNBC analyst Jonathan Alter. In Washington this week, America saw just how destructive President Trump can be. He's threatening a nuclear deal with Iran, killing Obamacare. Engine up the heat with North Korea and telling Puerto Rico it must go it alone, said MSNBC's Chris Matthews during another show. Late Thursday night, the President of the United States sabotaged a key component of the Affordable Care Act, a move that could have real consequences for 7 million Americans. The White House announced that it would stop paying insurance companies $7 billion in subsidies which experts say would undermine a key pillar of the Affordable Care Act said Matthews. President Trump's actions this week are part of a larger pattern of divisive destruction, said Matthews. What will they say when Destroyer loses its impact? John McCain makes vicious attack against President Trump, Kellyanne handles him with class. John McCain received the 2017 Liberty Medal at the National Constitution Center. At the convention, he made a speech condemning nationalism, with some thinly veiled references to President Trump. To fear the world we've organized and led for three quarters of a century, to abandon the ideals we advanced throughout the globe, to refuse the obligations of international leadership, and our duty to remain the last best hope of Earth, for the sake of some half baked, Spurious nationalism, cooked up by people who would rather find scapegoats than solve problems, 
is as unpatriotic as an attachment to any other tired dogma of the past that Americans consign to the ash heap of history, said McCain. McCain is apparently against America first now. Even though his 2008 slogan was country first, we live in a land made of ideals, not blood and soil, we are the custodians of those ideals at home and their champion abroad. We've done great good in the world. That leadership has had its costs, said McCain. Kellyanne slammed McCain for this. Well, I just don't see that in the president's agenda or in his philosophy. His moorings are conservative, and he is governing as a center-right president who believes that we pay too much in taxes, that we're over-regulated, that we have not taken terrorists seriously, said Kellyanne. We've not even been willing to call them terrorists for the last however many years. This country is safer and more prosperous under President Donald Trump. We hope we can rely upon Senator McCain's vote on any number of issues that Senator McCain has promised the people of Arizona he would do, lowering taxes, getting stronger against terrorism, obviously, again, being for free markets and being for prosperity and security around the globe, she said. Kaepernick attacks President Trump in massive lawsuit. Colin Kaepernick just created a lawsuit attacking President Trump. According to Kaepernick's attorney, Mark Dragos, there is a statistical impossibility that Mr. Kaepernick has not been employed or permitted to try out for any NFL team since the initiation of his free agency period. There's no way he could just be a bad player according to the suit. The lawsuit is against the NFL and it names President Trump as a conspirator. The owners of respondent NFL teams have been quoted describing their communications with President Trump, who has been an organizing force in the collusion among team owners in their conduct towards Mr. Kaepernick and other NFL players. Owners have described the Trump administration as causing paradigm shifts in their views toward NFL players, it says. On or around September 22, 2017, during a campaign rally speech in Alabama, President Donald Trump referred to NFL players that knelt during the national anthem, as sons of B.S., implying that Mr. Kaepernick was a son of a B, and demanded that NFL teams fire these players, it says. Since then, President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence have posted tweets and engaged in various public relations stunts designed to retaliate against Mr. Kaepernick and other players that have joined in Kaepernick's peaceful protest, it says. They are looking for up to $27 million in the lawsuit. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban just revealed disgusting thing his team will do before games. Shark Tank star and Mavericks owner Mark Cuban just exposed what he and his team plan to do before the start of basketball games. NFL players have been protesting the flag before games, and kneeling before the anthem. Some basketball coaches, like Greg Popovich are saying horrible things about our country. At the same time, Hillary Clinton and other Democrats in the media are trying to claim that the NFL players aren't being disrespectful by kneeling. Billionaire Mark Cuban echoed a similar talking point to Hillary Clinton. What makes this country special is that we respect the people that disagree with us. We don't tell people how to think. That's what makes our flag special. It's not illegal to burn it. It's not illegal to stomp on it. You can find that abhorrent behavior. But the fact that they can do it makes us different than every other country in the world," said Cuban. He then revealed that although he will honor the flag he will record players speaking their minds before the game. And that's what makes me so proud. We're going to honor the flag before a game. And like I told our guys, if they have something they want to say, we'll put them on the video and let them say exactly what's on their mind, so they control the narrative. Then the minute the ball goes up, all of that is forgotten and we play the game," said Cuban. Lip Keith Olbermann just blamed Trump for Mike Tyson raping people. 
Mike Tyson may have been a peerless boxer in his prime, but his excellence in the ring also came with unchecked aggression outside of it. Sadly, the troubled boxer ended up getting convicted of rape charges and spent time in jail. Ridiculously, liberal extremist and former ESPN host Keith Olbermann blamed Donald Trump for leading him there. On his program, Keith alleged that Trump and Don King somehow manipulated Tyson for their own benefit. Said the loopy liberal in the introduction of his new book with a classy title Trump is fking crazy, King and Trump came into a situation that was seemingly permanently under control, disabled the brakes and busted the headlights and painted over the speed limit signs, and within a few years, Tyson was in prison, convicted of rape. Olbermann alleged that Trump supposedly prevented Tyson from engaging in healthy behaviors, such as taking the cocktail of medications that kept him surprisingly stable and unexpectedly kind and even sweet-hearted but harsh at his buzz, or sticking to a diet, or training, or not attacking people, or not giving away $200,000 cars to strangers. Continued Olbermann, who is not related to Tyson, strangely. The point of this book is to chronicle how Trump managed to get America to choose him to do to our country what Trump helped do to my cousin Mike. Have Libera, S. Like Olbermann officially run out of good lies to tell about Trump?